here at Air Venture Oshkosh, and we're out on our discovery mission to find airplanes we don't know anything about. We'd like to think we know quite a bit about airplanes, but there's a lot of them. There's some nice ones, and here's one I don't know. I'm Dan Johnson. I'm talking with Will Fox and Doug Wilson today, and they're with an airplane that is, well, what is it? Will, what am I looking at here? <laughs> well, you're looking at a two-place stole aircraft, short takeoff and landing aircraft. Uh, it's got phenomenal performance. It stalls at about 30 miles an hour and it cruises at over 120 miles an hour. Wow. Uh, it'll haul a load and uh, Doug can tell you about multiple trips to Alaska. Well, that sounds good. Why don't you tell us what the name of it is? Well, it's called a Pegasus Air. Pegasus Air. Yeah. Okay. And uh, this one is plans built, but the Pegasus Air claim to fame is the Hanley Page leading edge slaps like the Helio Courier and uh, a lot of other airplanes have. And I see as you're doing that motion up there, it's a two-piece leading edge slap. Now is that a, a pilot deployed uh, slat or is it just uh, an airspeed uh, directed? It's completely uh, aerodynamically driven. The pilot doesn't have to do anything. It's just like a helio courier. So Doug, Doug, Doug calls it a two-place helio courier. Well, a lot of people haven't flown that, so yeah. that's why I asked the question. So when yeah. you slow it down, those come out. When you speed it up, they go back. That's exactly right. Is that the simple right. answer to Yeah, yes. about 60 miles an hour, they'll 60, come out okay. on you. And, uh, and when you go over 60, they'll go back in. So those are some pretty good numbers, 30 to 120. Right. That was the numbers you said. That's yep. a that's four times. That's sort of the holy grail of design, that's exactly actually. So right. yeah. uh, that's a good achievement. You've flown it all over the place. Is this one yours here? Yeah, this is mine. Mine's plans built, but there is kits available. Wills was built from the kit. And I gotta, um, I gotta pull a sign off the prop here so we can see it. This is his airplane. Yeah, and this, by the way, this particular one here, which looks too good to believe that, <laughs> has a thousand hours on it. No, it doesn't. It has, <laughs> it, it has a thousand five hundred and fifty hours. <laughs> you are Great looking. Answer. You are looking at the highest time Pegasus air pilot in the world. Is that right? A thousand five hundred and fifty hours on this particular airplane. Yeah. Yeah. Doug is our fatigue test engineer. Is he? He's out there leading the pack. I right? guess so. I'm impressed. But this he must be shining it up all the time. It looks brand new to me. When you look at the leading edge slats and you talk to people about them, the first thing everybody thinks is stolen, and it is. But really, once you fly it, what you find out is, is it's safety. Because the leading edge How's slats up? make the wing almost spin resistant or spin proof. And so what happens is, is, is that I can slow down to 35 or 40 mile an hour and do S turns. Wow. I can slow down to 35 or 40 mile an hour and do a flat turn. Give it right rudder. I was doing that out in the ultralight pattern just showing off. Giving right rudder and left aileron to keep the wings level <laughs> so I wouldn't lose the other traffic underneath my wingtip and flying around. And by the way, if you'll pan over there and look at the ultralight 103 special, he blessed me in the pattern. <laughs> <laughs> now I know that airplane because I've flown that one many times too. It's a 35, 40 mile an hour airplane, lovely little airplane. But if he passed you, you were going really slow. He passed me in the back. <laughs> and I had a passenger. So Very it wasn't, good. wasn't light. Now this is a kit? Yes, they are available as a kit. Yes. Okay, but you said you plans built? I built mine from plans. No, I, we don't talk to a lot of people who do plans built. You got a bunch of papers, you got a bunch of parts, and you started doing the work. Yeah, is that and, it? and I got a bunch of friends interested, and um, they didn't stay with it just because life got in the way. I was fortunate. I had that happens to a lot of people. Horrendously supportive wife. <laughs> she would fix my supper. And I did this in three and a half. You better give her a name here. Yeah, so. yeah. My love, my lovely wife, Dar. Ah, uh, there you go. Good and job. Uh, I did this. Thank you, Dar. Thirty-five hundred hours in three and a half years. She would fix my supper and leave it for me in the microwave. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, that's a lot of good support. So you know they have that line about behind every good man's a good, a better woman, or however it goes. Yeah, well, you got sure. one evidently. So good yeah. for what you. type of construction? Long, I'm sorry, Dan. What type of construction is used in the kit for an airplane? Well, this is a aluminum uh, control surface and wing, and pretty conventional spars, uh, built up front spar and bent rear spar, and uh, bent ribs, and uh, then the fuselage is chrome molly tube and cloth covered. So you did some welding? Oh yeah. Quite a bit of welding. Yeah, I did mine gas welding, you know, because I had to get I had to take well I mean I had gas welding. Now did you already have the skill set you needed when you came uh, to the some project? of the skill set I had, but definitely not the aluminum for me. And I had helped and not helped a lot a friend build an R V six. Okay. I had restored a few airplanes and that stuff, but I did not have the aluminum forming skill set. And you did a bunch of that, I'm guessing. If you did all the wing ribs, it's, it's uh, you know, formed aluminum, right? I'm going to give a plug for the kit, because you buy a kit. 
first off, his workmanship's a lot better on those ribs and that kind of stuff. And I have, you know, built plywood four blocks of buildings, you know. I have, I think, if I count this up right, 21 different four blocks. Is that right? Which first you had to make the block. Which I had to make, yeah. And then you had to make the part off the block. Yeah. And so, yeah, it might, for a lot of people, that might just be like, oh, okay, that's cool, I'm glad you did it, but that's too much work. Every, they can buy a kit. Every right? pilot, every aircraft builder I know helped me some way, somehow, in this airplane, <laughs> and a lot of people that weren't either one. So it's a social thing as well as a uh, build an airplane it's thing. It's a lot of that, yeah. That's cool. However, if you're going to build one from plans and get it done, you lose a lot of social life. Because you well, just have to work on it. So what, what's been your experience with the airplane? Is, is, there's another one over here, is By the there? way, Will has flown his airplane to 27,000 feet. Is that right? Well, yeah. tell us a little bit about that experience. Well, uh, for a while I had a Rotax 914. Right and, uh, the turbo-powered one, so we'll go high, one. right? Yep, and I live in Los Alamos, New Mexico. Okay. At 7, Already high on Already the ground, high. yeah. And I thought, I, you know, this thing climbs pretty good. I think I'll see how high it'll go. Is that right? That's exactly right. And so I didn't do it all at once. I did it on a couple of flights, you know, to figure it out. And uh, got an ATC clearance. I just called them up and said, hey, would you boys mind if I just saw how high this airplane went today? And they said, here's your squawk, and, you know, here you go. And, and oxygen. I had to have oh, yeah, oxygen. Right. I had to have oxygen. And uh, I was able to climb up to 27,000 feet, and the high, the high point of it, Dan, was as I was descending back down, the center stopped me at 24,000 feet and said, I've got a 737 that needs to go <laughs> by underneath you. That was the high point. Of That's a great story. <laughs> That's a great story. But the airplane did it, got you up there. The airplane that high? did great. Yeah, it still was climbing about oh, 150 feet a minute, but it was still pretty slow. Hey, that's not bad at that height, I would say. I'm pretty sure I can't climb 150 feet a minute at 27,000 feet. <laughs> Very cool. Well, so you've done a bunch of flying in the Pegasus Air, and you've done a bunch of flying in the Pegasus Air. How many other people are flying these things? Do you have any idea? Well, we've got, right now, we've got about 20% of the United States fleet sitting right here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Two, that means there are 10 in the U.S., is that correct? Yeah, pretty My good. My math skills haven't withered that badly. We actually had another arrival today. Lamar came in today. Is that so right? we have a third Pegasus Air here, and uh, most of the Pegasus Airs are uh, in So it's Quebec really a third Canada. of the U.S. fleet yeah, is here. a third here. of the U.S. fleet is now here. Most of the most of the Pegasus Airs are in Quebec, Canada, where the design originated up in northern okay, Quebec. Okay, so our northern neighbors is the source of this. Is yep. the northern and they have what we think about three dozen of them up there. Okay. Up there, so they fly them on O200s up there. I do. And that. they fly them on floats up there. Now, what have you got in yours here? I have a 160 horsepower O320. Okay. Wow. You got a lot of power in yep. this thing. So. Yep. A 900 pound or 700 pound useful load. I carry 36 gallons of fuel. And you talked about the Alaska trip because it, you know, we, we talked about the stuff, but we didn't brag much about the stole. Um, I operated off one trip, I operated off with four friends on a hunting trip where we operated off a 350 foot gravel trip, gravel bar, and hauled camp and moose in and out of that. Is that right? Yeah, 350 feet. 350 feet. That's pretty short. Yeah. I mean, uh, especially, especially, when, especially you when you're approaching the land on it, that can, that's not going to work. <laughs> But it did work. It did work. And you got these Gorilla tires on here too. So yeah, these are Alaska bush wheel tires and uh, you know, that's uh, my wife wrote every check for every part in this airplane. And she never complained about any of them. Except until this. this. <laughs> <laughs> I understand the, uh, that, caught, that, that dented your checkbook a little bit. Yeah. We won't go into the details. Uh, they make a nice product. There's a lot of people that use the Alaska bush wheels. There's nothing else out there like them. And they're, they're tough as nails, I understand. Yes, so roll over boulders, no problem. And a gravel bar was easy for you. Yep. Well, very cool. Uh, all right, so we want to, for those that didn't get enough out of this, I think it was quite a bit, but there's always more questions. You got a website that they could go to and get some more information? You can go to our uh, Yahoo group, who Will's daughter runs at PegasusAirAircraft.com. Or you can just Google Pegasus Air, and that'll give you uh, my name and Will's name and Tapani Aviation, the people in Canada that build the kit. And he's recently invested in some CNC equipment, and there'll be pre-punched kits available. Ah, uh, is that right? Okay, give me the name of the company once more. Tapani. Tapani. Yeah, T-A-P-A-N-E-E. -E. Okay, great. Tapani Aviation. Well, thanks for talking to us today. Will Fox, Doug Wilson. 
pilots extraordinaire of their Pegasus Air stole airplanes. I'm Dan Johnson. You can find more information about these airplanes, lots of light sport aircraft, lots of light kits on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks a lot for joining us today.